Good evening, Hezekiah. I'm just waiting on some others to hop on before we get started. Good evening, Chico. Just waiting on a few others to hop on. Oh, hello. This is where everybody's coming tonight. Well, we'll see. <laughs> this is the EC11 um, training work group. Oh, okay. I'm usually late to the party. <laughs> early tonight. I think I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, Chico and Hezekiah are either, and Marilyn, are either one of you new to ECC 11 and the, or either the Vibrata? If you are new, just put a 111 in the chat. Okay, so no one is new. Okay. All right. Do we have anyone on here who is new to the ECC 11 strategy or Vibrata? If you could put a 111 in the chat, I'd appreciate it. I just like to know who's here. Okay, so all of you are um, seasoned traders. <laughs> all right. So is it necessary? Do I need to actually go over the um, settings? Oh, we do. Chico is new. Okay. All right. So what I'll do is I'll start off, I will start off by going over the settings. And then we'll talk about the strategy. Chandler is no perfect. Then we'll uh, go over the set uh, indicators and then um, we'll take a few trades if we can. Again, my name is Teresa Webb and uh, I've been a student of Dr. Kathy's for about two years, just to give you a little bit of background information about myself. Um, and the, really Dr. Kathy is the only educator I've ever followed. Uh, mainly because she took something that was complex to me and made it very simple for me to understand and follow and make money. Now, granted, I'm going to tell you right up front, I don't know everything, but I know enough to make some money, okay? Dr. Kathy is the creator. She's the queen of the cloud and the creator of the ECC 11 strategy. So, um, what has happened is that Stephen Hooley, who's a broker, program analyst for the uh, web analyzer. He just took the information that she had and integrated it into the web analyzer. And that's how we have the ECC 11 strategy. Um, so first of all, you know, when I start trading, one of the things that I do is I go to check the news. And I'll just put in the chat Mama, where I go. I need to go pee pee. Hold on just a second, please. I can't stop and draw on the toilet, so just use it. You forgot to brush the toilet. No, I didn't. 
Okay, excuse me, that was my grandbaby. But anyway, one of the first places I go, I'll just put it in the chat, is forexfactory.com. And I go there for to see if there's any news that is going to impact the market. And when I say impact, I mean that's really going to move the market either positive or negative. And um, I went, I've already gone to forexfactory.com, and we didn't have any news items. But what we're what I'm usually looking for is red folders or either orange folders. And then I'll take a look at, I'll look a little bit deeper to see if in fact it's positive news or negative news. Then the other place that I go is FinViz. And that kind of gives you an idea of the pairs, the strength of the pairs and what pairs we should be looking at during the period of time in which we're trading. Um, gold is probably the strongest pair tonight. Um, even though that's not a, 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 um, a um, I don't usually trade gold unless Dr. Kathy calls it because she seems to be a little temperamental. <laughs> so therefore I have a tendency not to call that one on my own. But um, anyway, those are the two um, sites that I go to before I even start trading. And then the next thing I do um, is, of course, what we're going to go over is to the vibrata, the, the settings for the web analyzer to make sure that you have the correct settings. So if you could, please pull up your web analyzer and just follow my cursor throughout this session. But if you have it pulled up, sometimes when, you're pull, when you pulled it up for the first time, it does not necessarily have at the bottom where it says strategy, you may not see Dr. Kathy's ECC 11 strategy there. So if you don't, I just want to show you how to access it. So if you just click on that red line that says strategy and you will receive, you will see a drop, a pop-up window. And I'm going to show it to you in just a second. There it is. And it's the web analyzer setting. And what you'll do is scroll down to um, the drop down box. You click on that and you will see Dr. Kathy Kirkland's ECC 11 strategy, the first one. Click on it, save for mobile Safari desktop, and then scroll down to turn cha ching on off, turn it on, and then save settings and reload. And it should take you to Dr. Kathy's ECC 11 strategy. Okay. Yes, you should have it. Then what I like to do is talk about the time frames because this is this is how we trade. We trade by time frames. So the M5 time frame, what, the, what does that mean? It just means that each candle represents five minutes. As you can see, a red candle means that price is selling. A blue candle means that price is buying. Each one of these candles is five minutes. So for five minutes, this particular candles, these candles are going up and down, up and down for five minutes. So um, if in fact you take a trade alert on a five minute time frame, the way the algorithm is set, you'll only get three to five pips. So if three to five pips is okay with you, just keep that check mark in front of the M5, just keep it. I personally deselect it because if you take a trade alert for the M15 times and above, the algorithm is set for 10 pips and I'd rather go for 10. Now I want you to know at any time um, during this session, feel free to just um, you know, type your question in the chat or unmute yourself to ask a question. Um, under the time frames you will find, this is where your alert windows are. If in fact you see a greenish blue bar, that means that the alert is a buy. If the bar is red, that means the alert is a sell. Um, if you look to the left of 
of the bar, you will find trade ideas. Now you see LP, that's London Payout. Click on that. Elon, go wash your hands. Elon, excuse me. Go wash your hands. You, 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 you scared me. I'm sorry, but I couldn't hear you because you had those headphones on. Okay, so to the left, you'll see London Payout. Just click on LP. And if you don't have London Payout, I highly recommend that you get it because um, it's only 10 extra dollars a month. And Dr. Kathy, every night at 11.30 Eastern Standard Time, she actually provides um, pending trade ideas on indices. And if you're taking those trade ideas on indices, I do recommend a 0 0.01 lot size. But, um, Nine times out of 10, those trades will have taken profit by the time you wake up in the morning. So you're literally making money in your sleep, number one. And number two, you're gonna make way more than $10. So um, if you don't have London Payout, I highly encourage you to get it. Um, you click on LP and these are the trades that Dr. Kathy, if she sees trades throughout the day, or if she's putting the pending trades um, out in the evenings or at night, this is where you will find them, as well as Kevin Serrano. He does um, pending trade, I mean, he does trade alerts on um, trade ideas on GBP pairs and I think gold. So you will find that here in London Payout. So you can close that. And then there's four buttons at the bottom. The first button is for Forex pairs. This is where you would have to click on the Forex button in order to receive alerts for Forex pairs. Same thing for the second button, which is cryptocurrency. The third one is indices. And that's your US 30, um, SPX 500, et cetera. And the fourth one is gold and silver metals. Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah, I got a question. Okay. How do you get your London payout? I'm sorry? How do you get the London payout? In actuality, you used to get it from your shopping cart. Um, I haven't been out, you know, since I have it. Mm -hmm. I can't tell if you can still get it that way, but go to your shopping cart and see if you can access it. If you can't access it, I would just go to support and tell them you want it and have them give you some direction. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Okay, so um, the next thing we want to do is, is go to your settings for the ECC 11 strategy. Now, under EURU mindset, under this EURUSD, you'll see Ichimoku. Well, the ECC 11 strategy is nothing but the Ichimoku cloud. And um, we want to make sure that your settings are accurate because sometimes the settings will be 92652. And if that's the case for you, you want to go to this wheel that says settings, click on that, and click on inputs. And the conversion line, you want it to be six. So if you just click on that box and just change it to six, you can. Baseline is 13, click in the box and change it. Lagging span is 26 and displacement is 13. Go to defaults, click on defaults and it'll say save as default, click there. And then go to style because oftentimes these, the baseline and the conversion lines colors will be switched. 
So if the conversion line color is blue, let's click on the box and change it to red. And at the same time, you want to scroll down to where it says thickness, and you may want to thicken your red line just so you can easily see it. Then your baseline should be blue. So you wanna change that if it's red. And then you may want to change the thickness on your blue line, your baseline. Your lagging span is green. You may want to change the thickness on that line to the thickest width. So um, I would go ahead and change that so it's easy Easy, so it can easily be recognized. And then I would um, click on defaults, save as default and click OK. If you have circles on your chart, just chick, click anywhere on the chart and they will go away. Now the indicator that is it, that we use for the ECC 11 strategy is the Ichimoku cloud. And that is a Japanese term for one glance. As you can see, this purple shaded area from here to here, that is the cloud, okay? Now you can take one look at it and see what the trend is. You know, at first, you know, you it was an uptrend and it kind of consolidated out a little bit. And now it looks like it's coming back down. Prices maybe will be coming back down. This is the future because the candle is right here. So this is what price is gonna be doing in the future. But um, so right now it looks like it may be consolidating just a little bit or kind of going up a little bit, but not that much, just a gradual incline. But it will, in the future, it will be going down. Um, the, I'm sure that you've already completed series in the Academy 100 through 400. If you haven't completed at least 100 through the 400 series, I re highly recommend that you do that because if you have not completed those series when, doc, when you're following Dr. Kathy, you won't even know what she's talking about. So it's highly recommended that you do that. But I'm sure all of you have already done it. And they've talked about support and resistance. Well, the green outer line and this red or, you know, this red outer line, that's your support and resistance for the cloud, okay? Okay, so let's talk about the indicators. This green line is the Chiku span. And some people, educators refer to it as the lagging span. Dr. K refers to it as the money line. Um, I really, this is my number one indicator because it is the first indication of which way price is going. As you can see, you know, it makes sharp moves. And that just lets me know what price is going to do. Um, the candle follows the money line, follows the green line. Um, and the red line is the Tenkinson, and we refer to it as a signal line. And what you'll find is that oftentimes you'll see this red line kind of giving a signal as to what the candle's going to do. And sometimes you can see it pushing the candle either up, down, or sideways. Sometimes you can see that. But that's the Tenkinson. And then this blue line right here, that is the Kenjinson. And this is the stop loss line. If you do not know how to set a stop loss, just take your crosshair and put it at the end of the money, of the um, stop loss line, the Kenjinson. Put it at the end and then look to the right at price, see where price is. And in this particular pair, price is 1.08650. That would be your stop loss. 
Um, another option for stop loss, I've heard Dr. Kathy say for 10 pips, you could do 30 pips as a stop loss. Another thing I've heard her recommend is going to babypips.com. Babypips.com allows you the ability to put in your, how much capital you have. Um, and then I think it also asks you what's your risk. Of course, we recommend that you don't risk any more than one to 3% of your capital. And then um, it may ask another question. I can't remember what it is, but it will calculate how much you're risking based on that trade, based on your lot size. So um, you may want to go there and check it out. But those are three options that you have for setting your stop loss and do whichever one works best for you. Okay, now the way the algorithm is set, you know, as I said, for anything on the M5 time frame, for any trade idea that comes in on the M5 time frame, you're only going to get three to five pips. Um, but what I'm getting ready to tell you applies to the five minute time frame and above and the one and the one, the 15 and above. So anytime the, the way the algorithm is set, anytime the red line is above the blue line, price is buying. Anytime the red line is below the blue line, price is selling. If the red line is above the blue line, above the cloud, that's a strong buy. If the red line is below the blue line like it is right now, below the cloud like it is right now, that's a strong sell. Okay, that's the way this algorithm is set for your success. Anytime you see this red line cross like it did right here, you see where it crossed the blue line? you know you're going to get about you're going to get 10 pips out of that move so anytime you can catch that you know you're going to get 10 pips whether it's above or below the cloud um see what else do i usually tell you hey uh-huh your cloud um you're on the 15 minute time frame right yes yeah, your cloud is in a different position as mine. Did you adjust something at the beginning that I missed? What is your settings? Uh, for the cloud? Mm-hmm. Where it says Ichimoku. Uh-huh. It's 926-5226. Yeah, that's where your um that's why there's a difference. If you go to the uh, the wheel in the middle that says settings, click on that. Mm -hmm. And then um, click on inputs. Yeah. And then um, you, this is where you make your change. Conversion line is six. Mm -hmm. And just click on the box and change it. Baseline is 13. 26 and 13? 6, 13, 26 and 13, yes. And then go to defaults and save as default. And then go to style. And your conversion line should be red. So just click on the box if it's not. Is it red? Now it is. Okay. And then red. your baseline should be blue. Blue. Yeah, you may want to change the thickness on those lines too so you can easily see them. Okay. All right. Should they all be thick? Well, I changed the thickness on mine just so they were easily recognizable. The lagging span as well is pro I have it at the thickest. The lagging span? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's the money line. The lagging span. We'll call it green, green, red. Green, yeah, green, the red. green is fine. So you can change the thickness on that. You don't have to change the color. Okay. Change the thickness on it. And then go to defaults, save as default, and then click OK, and you should be good. OK. Yeah, now it looks like yours. OK, perfect. Um, see, I forgot what I was saying. Uh, you're saying something about the red line coming down. 
Uh, yeah, anytime you catch it crossing, um, whether crossing it's, the blue line or the cloud, right? Anytime you catch the red line crossing the blue line, mm -hmm. that move will give you ten pips. That move alone will give you ten pips. Mm -hmm. So you just want to make sure that it is actually crossed. Yeah, like uh, like completely crossed. It's just not in the crossing. Right, because brain. what happens is I've seen it like. Um, looks like it's going to cross and then it'll go back up. Mm -hmm. So just make sure it's fully cross, but you get 10 pips from that move. Okay. And then does this uh, program by Vibrata have an app? What was that? Does it have an app for the phone or is this just on the laptop? Um, if you saved it for your mobile devices, um, when, I went, when you go to the web analyzer settings and you click on Dr. Kathy Kirkland's settings, it mm -hmm. allows you the ability to save for your mobile devices. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, yes, you'll get alerts on your phone and you'll get the web analyzer on your phone as well. Okay. Okay. Did right, you thank you. Okay. All right. So, um, see the red line, crossing the blue line. Um, so I'm kind of waiting on um, an alert to see if we can get into something right now. Um, prices, I mean, there's probably not a lot of movement. The Asian session is one of the slowest sessions. The Asian Tokyo session is one of the slowest sessions. Um, you have more activity, more movement in the market during London and, um, and uh, New York. So, um, I, and, and that's why I really picked this time to, to do the training because of the fact that you know, it gives everybody an opportunity to ask questions because we don't want anyone to get left behind. I mean, we just really do believe that if you can make pro if you can profit quickly, well, then you're more apt to share this with others. And that's what it's about. You know, it's, it's really about changing the world because anytime you have this type of a vehicle available to you, you know, you have options and that's what it's about, having options in life. Um, yep. So, let's see where we go from here. Let me see if there's any other questions. Chat, nothing. Uh, so right here, we're using the EC11, correct? Yes. Are you in settings? Um, yeah, I already put that in, but can we, uh, what other ones do you use or do we use normally? What other what? Uh, methods. Well, like, uh, like uh, for example, mm, the Lee Allen's money flow strategy. No, you would have to get on her go live. I don't, the only thing we're doing here is the ECC 11. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that. I'm just saying uh, this is the same one where she uses hers. That's my question, Lee Allen. She uses That's the web analyzer, but she does, she has a different strategy. Yeah, yeah, but on this web, because this is the first time I use a web analyzer. That's what I'm asking. But this is the one that she uses also to use her strategy, the web analyzer. I guess. I don't know. I've never followed her. Okay. All right. Thank you. I just, oh, know, question for you. I just know that she uses the web analyzer. Okay. Okay. Um, it looks like we have a signal. So let me show you what I do um, when there is a trade alert. Hold on just a second. Let me get rid of this. Okay, it looks like we have, let me see, where was it? It was an hour and 15 minutes. It wasn't that one. 15 minutes ago. Uh, one hour ago. 45 minutes ago. Hmm. I thought we had an alert, but I guess we didn't.
Oh, it's in LPO. Okay. Let's see what we've got over here. Thank you. Okay, so Kevin is thinking about a sale on GBP AUD around 1.89940 on take profit on the H1 time frame. So that's the one hour time frame. Um, when I get an LPO alert, I usually let me go to GBP AUD. I usually analyze it to see if I'm ready to get into it or not. Um, it's on the one hour time frame. And we know that it is a sale. And we can clearly see that the cloud is, a, is it has a downward trend to it. Um, the red line is below the blue line. Um, he said that it's around 1.89940. So if you wanted to, you could actually put in a pending trade on this. Um, your entrance price would be 1.89940. It would be a sell stop. Oh, it's already here, a sell stop. And then um, you could, he has, how many take profits here? He has take profit one, take profit two. So you could easily do, I usually do, take profit two. That's just me. But you can take take profit one and then go back in and do take profit two. Elon, can I have my phone, please? Let me use this for a second. Hmm? I want to put a trade in. I'll give it right back to you. Don't take it unplug. Okay, I'm not going to unplug it. All right, so what I usually do is... Um, so on the one hour time frame. So look at your trade. Mm -hmm. Look at your trade. Okay. It's not doing what I want it to do, is it? I'm trying to see what he sees. Okay, so if I can't see it on the one hour, I'm going to take it a little, I'll go to the four hour to see if I see what he sees. So he says it's going, the entrance is going to be at eight, nine, nine, four, oh. So it's coming up here shortly. So I'll just do this. I'll go to my horizontal line, click anywhere on the chart, go to settings, and I'll do my interest is going to be Eight nine nine four zero. Oh. I'm going to click OK, and that horizontal line is going to make the necessary adjustment. And then my take profit is going to be. Go to my trend line. Click on horizontal line, click anywhere on the chart. I'm going to go to my settings and I'm going to put in take profit two. This is the way I trade. And I'm going to put in 1.89428. If you want to put in the first take profit, you can. And as you can see, this is where you're going to enter into the trade and this is where it's going to take profit. So you can do it as a pending trade if you like to. Right now, price is at 902.41.
Um, you can put it in as a pending trade and then um, see if it takes, see if I'm sure it'll take profit because it just, I, when I look to the left, I can clearly see that it's going to take profit unless something impacts it that we're just not aware of. Question: Is there a certain reason, or or certain reason why you you wouldn't consider the first take profit? Oh, well, that's just the way I trade. You can use the first take profit. Okay. Yeah, usually in most instances, the first take the the first take profit takes, and I usually take the second take profit um, because it usually okay. takes as well. But that's just me. You know, okay. do whatever works for you. And then I also had another question. I wanted to know if there was any um, resources or tools out there that um, gives recommendation on certain pairs for certain uh, market times. Because I know we have a strength, we have the the uh, strength analyzer just to see the strength of the pairs. Mm -hmm. But is there like a a suggested list of pairs to to kind of look for? during a certain time? Well, the one thing I, you know what, I really don't know. The only list that I'm familiar with, and I can't remember where I got it from. I think I got it out of a class, but I can't remember what the website is. But there was a list, I had a list of um, pairs and how they paid out, you know, so I would know what currency pays out the most. And that's the only list that I've had or even looked for. Because what happens when you trade, when you start trading, I mean, you can continue to ask and, and look for something like that. I'm sure it exists. But for me, when I started trading, you know, I traded, Dr. Kathy calls, calls out a lot of pairs. And I used to try to catch them all, to be honest with you, especially when I was in demo. But what I quickly learned um, is that you only can trade one, it's best to only trade one trade at a time until you get to the point where you're more, you've traded quite a while and you understand and you fully understand risk management. Um, but I still just trade one trade at a time. Now there, just like I said, there could be a list somewhere you may want to Google it or something. Um, but what I've learned is that I kept a record of every trade that I traded every day. And then I also, I would list down the pair. I would list um, what my entrance price was, what my take profit was, what my stop loss was. And I would indicate whether or not it took profit. And what that taught me was there were certain pairs that I liked. And then there were other pairs that I didn't. And it also taught me that the market repeats itself constantly. So I found maybe about, I found that there were about three pairs that I liked the best. And I just started trading them, those. Even though EUR, GBP, I know it, it pays out more. I just don't particularly care for the pattern of it. So therefore, I like GBP USD. You know, I like GBP AUD. And then more importantly, what I like more are the indices. So, you know, I just kind of found. Do you, do you, can you hear yourself? Wait, hold on just a second, guys. I'm on the phone. I'm on this. I'm doing a training. Okay. And you're talking loud because you've got these earphones in. So go ahead and look at your videos and I'll let you know when I'm done, okay? Um, what was I saying? Um, let me see. What was I talking about? Uh, oh yeah, you'll find that there's certain pairs that you like, there's certain patterns and, and you study those pairs so that you learn the pattern of the pairs. And then it does, at that point, it doesn't really matter if that makes sense. So I didn't answer your question, but I did share with you how kind of how I got to the point where there's only a few pairs that I trade anyway. Okay. 
I don't know who, who asked that question. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, so we're on the hour chart, correct? For GBP. For the, um, yeah, the GB, the British pound and Australian dollar. Uh-huh. So to put in this, the end of the trade that we just talked about, we have to wait an hour until the timer runs out, correct? For the next candle. No, you can put it in the end trade. I'll then put it in now? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Because right now price is at 1.90343. So you can put in a pending um, sell stop. Okay. Yeah, because it says right here, if you look under type, mm -hmm. it says sell stop. Okay. Thank and you. then you can put in your take profit. You can put in your take profit or take profit one, 1. 1.89690. And then he also has, does he have a stop loss here? Let me see. Yeah, I didn't see one. I don't see a stop loss. But you can do a, a 30 pip stop loss if you choose. Um, so your entrance price is 89940 So we're looking at about 987. So we're looking about a 30 pip move right here. Yeah, that's about a 30 pip move. yeah just for take profit one so you know when you're doing more than 10 pips you just want to make sure that um, you're using proper risk management and just like i said you can put it in as a pending sale stop any other let me see if i missed any other questions What's already what's, in profit? What's the difference between, oh, my bad. Uh, Travis, what's already in profit? Are you referring to GBP AUD? Okay. Well, I think someone else had a question. Yeah, what's the difference between the green and the red traits? The what now? The green, the one with the green banner and the one with the red banner. Okay, the red banner just means that the trade ideal is a sell. The green just means the trade ideal is a buy. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. And when you're doing the London payout, the first thing you want to do is look to see what time this was in work. Because you want to make sure that it's a current trade idea. So the first thing you want to look at is the time. Okay. Got you. Hello, Teresa. Hi. That's me again from last night. <laughs> oh, okay, you're fine. Yeah. Uh, my question is, um, I know last night you mentioned you had like your favorite Forex pairs. Uh -huh. so what, what were those again? I know, was it GBP, USD? What, what was it? Yeah, it's GBP, USD, and GBP, AUD. Okay. And now uh, also when, when determining the the, the uh, strength of the currency. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, if the dot, well, let's say the dollar was so somewhat stronger than the the uh, British pound, mm -hmm. um, does it matter in terms of whether you, whether we get into the trades or not? Or I know we, I know normally it's GBP uh, like USD. Mm -hmm. Does it matter in terms of how it's set up? Well, what I do is I look to see where the strength on it before I get into it. I go to finviz.com to see what the strength is on it. 
you know, and I kind of look, you know, some people look for percentages. I'm a color person. I do look at the percentages, but I look to see how green it is. And that tells me whether or not I want to trade it or not. So yeah, it does make a difference. Um, I think more seasoned traders, you know, they look at it to see whether or not which currency is the highest to determining to determine whether or not they want to buy a sale. I'm one of those type of traders where it doesn't matter to me because if in fact price is buying, I'm a price range trader. If in fact price is buying, I'm going to buy. If in, price, if in fact price is selling, I'm going to sell. I'm going to make some money either way it goes. Okay. Now, um, now I noticed that I jumped in forex trade this morning and of course you know, it's still going uh i know that the forex moves a little slower mm -hmm. um like i said does like i say your particular favorites do they tend to move a little faster or how does that look? yeah usually i trade those you know like i trade gbp pairs like during london session and you know and that's that's a that's a factor too like you know during this session this is tokyo asian session you want to look at gb G, G, jpy pairs as well as maybe some australian pairs and i think nzd pairs move this time um during london session that's when i want i like to trade london session so that's when i'm definitely looking at gbp pairs and usually if you start like i start trading like maybe around 2 30 um in the morning and usually before i go to bed go back to sleep around four o'clock they probably took profit if it doesn't take profit by the time i go to sleep at four o'clock it'll take profit before new york session usually so yeah you they move faster and it usually takes profit before the session ends okay thank you very much because i start the the uh our 90 day challenge tomorrow so i'm just trying to you know get a step ahead to be prepared yeah and have you already looked at your pairs to see which ones you like well, uh, no, um, that's what um, I am trying to get mapped out. And I know, like I said, when, you, when, when we were training last night, uh, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned, you know, your favorites. And I figured, you know, there has to be a particular reason why. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I want to at least find something that's going to uh, move within the market so that you know, I, I would love, love to meet, meet my 90 trade goal. That's for certain. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're looking at your nine, are you using one of the um, compound interest spreadsheets? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's what we're going to use. So, um, and I think for that, at least the way I, I've done it is that I just look at meeting my goal every day. Right. So, you I mean, and that's what I'm looking at. I just want to make sure that, you know, I have the, the information. To, you know, to build myself for it. Right. and also to share, share with other people on, on the team. Right, right, right. Perfect. Okay, that's awesome. It teaches that um, compound um, spreadsheet. I mean, it teaches you discipline too, because the one thing's for sure: once you meet your goal, you do not want to trade anymore. Now I'm gonna shout to the mountaintop. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot all right any other questions all right well what i want to do is just take a minute i've only got about 10 minutes left i just want to take a minute to show you and i've kind of showed you with the line to pay out how i get into a trade once um what i look for when I get into a trade, once I get a trade alert. So as an example, I gotta close this out. Okay, so as an example, what I'd look for, we're just gonna go with AUD, USD. 
The first thing I look for is to see whether or not um, the time passed is within the first five minutes. And the reason that I do that is because I usually trade between, I usually trade the London session. It's a lot of alerts that go off during the London session. And then there's a lot that goes off during New York session. So since there are so many alerts, and that was one, let me see. But anyway, um, so there's so many alerts coming in that, you know, if it's not within the first five minutes, unless it's one of my favorite peers, I probably won't even take it or look at it. But um, I'm gonna look to see if it's within the first five minutes. And then the first thing, if it is, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the pair and that brings up the market for that particular pair. Then I'm going to, This is a sale. I can clearly see that this is a sale, potential sale on AUD USD. You've got the red sidebar that indicates that it's a sale. So if it's a sale, I'm looking to see if the red line is below the blue line. And it's clearly on the M15 time frame. So I'm going to check my time frame to make sure I'm on the right time frame. Excuse me. The red line line is below the blue line, but price is in the cloud. So I recommend that new traders trade above the cloud or below the cloud, but not when price is within the cloud until you've been trading for a while and you can determine when price is going to consolidate because when price is in the cloud, usually that means the price is going to consolidate for a while. So on this particular trade, since it is in the cloud, I will be waiting until it came out of the cloud. So since it's a sale, I will wait until price probably came outside of the cloud, make sure the candle closes outside of the cloud, and then I will get in on, on the next candle if that was a possibility. But this is what I do, okay? I go to my, tre my trend line and I click on my horizontal line and I click anywhere on the chart and then I go to settings and what I do is put in the call at price. The call at price for AUD USD is 065428. Then I click OK. Then I also go to the trend line and I click on the horizontal line again, click anywhere on the chart, go to settings. Um, I know that for, this is a 15 minute time frame. the algorithm is set for 10 pips. So I'm gonna subtract 10 pips from the call at price, which is going to make this particular take profit, um, three, two, six, five, three, two, Eight. Then I'm going to click OK, and the necessary you okay, and the necessary adjustments have been made. So that lets me know what I'm looking for. It lets me know that I'm looking for prices. This is a sale. I'm looking for a price to approach this line, which is my entrance price, and this is where I'm going to take profit for ten pips. Now, um, you can also, if you're interested in knowing what candle price was called on, all you have to do is go to your trend line. I usually don't do this. Some people do. Click on the vertical line. Just click anywhere on the chart. Go to the time that has passed, and it will be 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock will be 2200. price was called on that candle. So that gives you an idea of the candle that price was called on and you're waiting on it to, looks like it's already taken profit, it has. So that's what I look for. And then what I do is I look at the current candle, this would be a sale. I'm looking for a sale candle. 
you know, this is a 15 minute time frame. The candle is fully formed at 12 minutes. So if in fact your candle, like the timer on this candle is four minutes, I will wait until the next candle before I even uh, decided as to what I was going to do. I'll wait for the next candle. If it's a sale candle, I will wait until the timer got to 12 minutes. I will still check to make sure the red line is below the blue line and it's outside of the cloud. Then I would go to the five minute time frame, and then I would check to make sure that the candle was red. I would make sure that the red line is below the blue line. And then I would do the same thing on the one minute candle. Red line below the blue line. And I'm looking for a sale candle. And if everything lines up, I'm going to get in the trade. Any questions? Quick question. Uh-huh. Okay. And, and I know, like, let's say that everything checks out, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, I don't know if I recall uh, hearing information about, let's say that, that the money line, mm -hmm. say that the money line crosses over your call debt price. Is, mm -hmm. is that probably one of the best times to enter into that trade if it's everything checked out? I guess that I guess they said it to minimize pullback. Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, the money line is the first and the real the, really the money line is everything, to be honest with you. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Now you can make a lot of money just focusing on the red line above the blue line or below the blue line. You can make a lot of money because that's how I first started to trade. Mm -hmm. So you can make a lot of money that way. But the money line is, in my opinion, everything. And that money line, if I'm in a sale, that money line is going to be pointed down before I get in that trade. Right. That, that's what I just want to make certain. Okay. I think that's what I've been practicing. Um, you know, once it crosses over that entry price, then enter. That way I know that everything has, you know, lined up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that money line is going to be pointed down, straight down, for me to be entering to it. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Two minutes. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, you know, um, don't forget that Dr. Kathy, you know, she's going to be calling trades tonight at 1130, and then they're doing the trade-a-thon this week. So I think she comes on at 930 Eastern Standard Time. Um, and she's on for about two hours. So, um, hey, happy trading tomorrow. And um, we'll be here, uh, what's today, Wednesday? We'll be here tomorrow, same time, same place. Um, and hey, I mean, you know, the one thing Dr. Kathy always says, which I had done anyway, but that was for certain pairs, you want to have different accounts. So I don't know how many of you are live or how many of you are still in demo. If you're still in demo, I recommend, you know, trading as many um, pairs as you possibly can because you're practicing. You're practicing not just Dr. Kathy's rhythm, but also you want to know when she is calling a trade. And this, so you're taking as many trades as you possibly can in one demo account. Get you another demo account and trade it like it's your live account. So say for instance, your live account, you know, you are, you know right now that when you start your live account, you're gonna put $500 in it. Well, you wanna trade it like it's only $250 in it. So your risk management is gonna be based on $250, one to 3% of $250, and that's gonna determine your life size. Trade one trade at a time until you have traded enough, understand risk management enough where you can do more than one. But I'm gonna tell you, the best way to trade is to trade one trade at a time. I still just trade one trade at a time. So, um, and I think the biggest key is to understand risk management. It really is. Um, knowing that every trade, I don't care what trade you get in, it's going to pull back. I can count probably on one hand how many trades I've gotten in that didn't pull back. 
I can, maybe I can count on a couple fingers. But you're always going to have pullbacks. You're always going to be see red. It's going to happen. You've got to cover the spread, you know. And if in fact, I mean, there's just no way in the world that you can go, go into a trade and not have any pullbacks. That's just the way life is. And the market is no different. So you guys, happy trading tomorrow and um, have a good evening. And um, I'll see you. We'll be here tomorrow, same time, same place. I hope you got value out of today's session. Most definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome.